The Jack Benny Program. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. L-S-M-F-T. 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 Why, sure. Yes, sir. You bet. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. At markets now open in the South, independent tobacco experts, auctioneers, buyers, and warehousemen present at the auctions can see the makers of Lucky Strike consistently select and buy the riper, the naturally milder Lucky Strike tobacco. Sold American. Remember Swan Record Show that among such men who know tobacco best, it's Lucky's two to one. <laughs> The Lucky Strike Program, starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, and yours truly, Don Wilson. (laughs) And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's go out to Jack Benny's house in Beverly Hills. Jack has invited the gang over for a late Sunday breakfast, and right now he's in the kitchen getting things started. Now, let's see. I want the gang to have a nice breakfast. I think I'll start them off with some good old California orange juice. No, no, I think they'd like sliced orange better. Yep, that's what I'll do. I'll slice it. (laughs) Phew. Well, there's no use stopping now. I might as well slice the other half. Sister, look in the eyes. I know what I'm doing every minute, kid. That must be the rest of the gang. Come in. Hiya, Mary. Well, hello, Mary. Hello, fellas. Hey, Mary, who's your friend? Come here, babe. Phil! <laughs> now, cut that out. It's me, wise guy. Jack, I told you to roll your pants legs down. I'm leaving them up. It's cooler this way. Come on, let's go in the kitchen and get things... Phil! Stop twisting my knee. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought it was the doorknob. (laughs) Another remark like that and you won't get any breakfast. Say, Don, you haven't opened your mouth since you got here. Just put the food on the table and stand back. That I know, Don. And do us a favor, will you? Give the rest of us a 15-minute head start. Please. Don, the food isn't even ready yet. Get up out of that crouching position. (laughs) Yeah. And, Phil, get the bacon out of the icebox. Okay. You'll find it in the lower... Hey, kids, look at the stuff in this icebox. Three quarts of cream and four pounds of butter. (laughs) Yes, sir, and I'm not paying for it either. You don't, and the milkman will sue you for the money. Or breach a promise. (laughs) What? And them doorknobs ain't gonna help you with the jury. Oh, fellas, lay off of that stuff, will you? Stop kidding around and help me get breakfast. Do we have to prepare the breakfast, Jack? Where's Rochester? That's what I'd like to know. I let him have Friday night off. Here it is, Sunday morning. He isn't back yet. Maybe he ran away and got married. That's what I thought, but I looked in his hope chest and everything was there. (laughs) Rochester has a hope chest? Well, it isn't exactly a hope chest. He won it from an undertaker and had no other use for it. (laughs) Anyway, he couldn't have got married. I didn't give him his availability certificate. (laughs) Come on, Mary, help me with the food. Look, if you fellas will get out of my way, I'll have breakfast ready in no time. Mary's right, fellas. Come on, let's go in the other room. Hey, Phil, not so fast. That easy chair is mine. So, Jack, while we're waiting, do you mind if I turn on the radio? No, no, Don. Go ahead. Never in automobile history have used cars brought such high prices. So if you have a car in your garage that's not working, sell that car to me. 
I will pay you $8,000 for it, sight unseen. <laughs> Providing, after selling the car, you will let me live in the garage. The phone number is granted 864. Get something else, Don, will you please? Stop moving the dial so much. Okay. Here. <laughs> The foregoing was a paid political broadcast. <laughs> oh, gosh, my set always does that when something interesting comes on. Get something else, Don. How do you do, ladies and gentlemen? Is your belt buckle tarnished? Do your suspenders give you that over 35 letdown? <laughs> is there a deficiency in your diet? If there is, you need bulk in your Hulk. So remember, to avoid these annoyances, use sympathy soothing syrup. Sympathy spelled backwards is your tapamus. Y H T A P M Y S. You know, I gotta, I gotta try some of that stuff. Remember, folks, sympathy soothing syrup comes in the 10 cent size, the 25 cent family size, the 49 cent economy size, or for a dollar ninety eight, we will pipe it right to your house. <laughs> Say, fellas, that must be awfully good stuff. Huh? Okay, boys, breakfast is ready. Come and get it. Okay, come on, Don. Phil, shut off the radio. And now for today's guest star, we have that lovely singer of songs, Miss Martha Tilton. Hey. Hey, wait a minute. Don't shut it off, Phil. That's Martha Tilton. She was overseas with me in the South Pacific. Let's listen to her. Uh, Martha, before you sing, would you tell us a little something about your overseas trip? What a show we had. Well, as you know, I went over with Larry Adler, Carol Landis, June Bruner, and Jack Benny. Hmm. Had to put my name last. <laughs> oh, well. Is there any particular incident you'd like to tell us about? Well, let's see. Oh, yes. One night, Jack and I and a native guide were making our way through a dark jungle in New Guinea. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Jack was carrying the flashlight And the native guide and I were close behind Suddenly Jack snapped the light off <laughs> What are you laughing at, Martha? Jack still thinks he kissed me <laughs> Well, how do you like that? She must have ducked And now, ladies and gentlemen Martha Tilton will sing the trolley song Imagine her telling a thing like that, huh? Come on, fellas, sit down and have breakfast With her high starch collar and my high top shoes And my hair piled high up on my head I went to lose a jolly hour on the trolley And lost my heart instead With his light brown derby and his bright green tie He was quite the handsomest of men I started to yen, so I counted to ten Then I counted to ten again Trolley, ding, 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 went the bell. Zing, 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 went my heart strings. For the moment I saw him, I fell. Chug, 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 went the motor. Bump, 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 went the brake. Thump, 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 went my heart strings. When he smiled, I could feel the car shake. He tipped his hat and took a seat He said he hoped he hadn't stepped upon my feet He asked my name, I held my breath I couldn't speak because he scared me half to death Buzz, buzz, buzz went the buzzer Plop, plop, plop went the wheel Stop, stop, stop when my heart as he started to leave, I took hold of his sleeve with my hand. And as if it were planned, he stayed on with me and his friend just to stand with his hand holding mine to the end of the
that swell? Yeah, Martha can really sing, can't she, Jack? You said it. The boys were nuts about her. Hey, that was a wonderful breakfast, Mary. I'll help you with the dishes. Let me help her, Jackson. We don't want you to get dishpan hands. Well, if Rochester was here, we wouldn't have to... Don, Don, stop dropping your ashes on the rug. But, Jack, these are cigarette ashes. I know they're cigarette ashes, and I don't want them on my rug. But, Jack, these are Lucky Strike cigarette ashes. I don't care if they're... Oh. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, Don. Go right ahead. You see, I got a little excited because this is a very unusual rug. It's, a, it's real Angora. Why don't you kill it so you don't have to take it out at night? <laughs> That isn't funny. Say, fellas, I got to go over to NBC and set up the sound effects for the broadcast. See you there later. Okay, Jackson. So long, Jack. Do you have to go this early? Yeah, I just have a few minutes to catch the bus. Goodbye. Clang, 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 went the trolley. Buzz, 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 went the buzz. Gee, these buses are always so crowded. Oh, well, I don't mind standing. Hmm, things are sure happening fast these days. Look at these headlines. Japs driven back in Leyte. That's swell. Both candidates winding up their political campaigns. Gee, I mustn't forget to vote. Russians advancing in Germany. Ah, they're doing a great job. Hey, buddy, do you mind if I turn my own pages? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I just wanted to find out what happened to Snowflake and Shaky. <laughs> See, that Shaky is some guy, and before him there was the brow and prune face and flat top. Gosh, I'm tired. I wish I could sit down. Well, here, old man, take my seat. <laughs> Thank you very... Why... Fred! Fred Allen! Hello, Jack. Imagine meeting you on a bus. Why, yes, it's such an amazing coincidence. Here I was just thinking about the brow, flat top, and prune face, and I run into you. <laughs> well, that's what I like about you, Jack. You'll say anything for a laugh. And someday you may get one. <laughs> Thanks. By the way, Fred, how are you coming along with your picture? I just finished the picture, Jack. It's called It's in the Bag. Oh, oh, well, it ought to be a success. You're advertising it under each eye. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, good luck on the picture. Well, thanks. You know, Jack, people would sure be surprised to hear you wishing me luck. They think our feud is on the level. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I wonder how many of my listeners, my ex-listeners, thought I was serious uh, last year when I said, Benny isn't really cheap. It's just that he has short arms and carries his money low in his pocket. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, and I bet a lot of my listeners thought I meant it when I said... The way Alan talks through his nose, he's the only comedian on radio who tells them and smells them at the same time. <laughs> yes. Oh, that was a good one, too. Yeah. One of the few, as I... And remember... <laughs> remember the... Uh, <laughs> remember the time on my program when I, uh, when I was kidding about you having no blood? Yeah. What a laugh I got that time I said... Every time Benny goes out in a polo shirt, he takes a pencil and makes lines on his arms so people will think he has veins. <laughs> yeah. When Mary explained that to me, I nearly died. <laughs> uh, remember the time that I said that Alan had so many wrinkles in his face, he looked like a convertible with the top halfway down? <laughs> I was with Munch the day that they, you... Uh, <laughs> you know, when I, uh, when I explained that to my Pontiac, I thought the exhaust pipe on the car had lips. <laughs> oh, gosh, what fun we have on the radio. You know, Fred, radio wouldn't be so bad if I could just find a singer. Oh, you haven't found one yet? No, and I'm willing to pay as high as $35 a week. 
If I could, if I could get the, if I, if I could just get the kind of singer the public likes. Well, that's just it, Jack. You have to find out what the public wants. Now, you should take a poll, you know, like Dr. Gallup, ask the man in the street. The man in the street? Well, certainly. Now, Jack, if you'll come with me, I know just the place we can get a cross-section of public opinion. All right, let's go. Great. Do you think uh, this is the right type of neighborhood for me to conduct my poll? Yes, Jack. Here we are down in Allen's Alley. <laughs> Allen's Alley. You know, we have something like this around my neighborhood, only we call it the La Brea Tar Pits. <laughs> I know it. I saw it the day I went over to see your uncle. I... Well, let's not lose any time. <laughs> let's not... He was playing pitch in the... Uh, let's not uh, lose any time, Jack. Here's the first house, the little vine-covered termite gnawed shack of John Doe. Yeah? <laughs> Mr. Doe, this is Jack Benny. He's trying to, uh, trying to find a singer for his radio show. Oh, yeah? Well, Mr. Benny, who's that jellyhead who's been singing on your show? He always sings the same song. That's what I like about the South. <laughs> oh, you mean Mr. Fay. I mean Phil Harris. Do you like, do you like Phil singing? His voice is flatter than a lunch wagon waffle. Now look, Mr. Doe. If Harris don't quit singing about the South, he'll start another civil war. <laughs> Uh, forget, Mr. Harris. Just tell me one thing. Do you know where I can get a singer? Oh, why don't you ask the Andrews sisters? Maybe they got a brother. <laughs> no, I've tried everybody else, though. Hey, why don't you do what Frankenstein done? You mean make myself a singing monster? Yeah. You could take Singing Sam's mouth, Rudy Valley's nose, Morton Downey's chest, and Nelson Eddy's body. Say, that sounds good. Yeah, you'd have 10% Valley, 15% Singing Sam... 20% Downey and 49% Eddie. Why not 50% Eddie? Well, you don't want no half Nelson, do you, bud? <laughs> so long. This is a waste of time, Fred. He didn't help me any. Now keep your beret on, Jack. Let's try this next house. No. <laughs> ah, Mrs. Nussbaum. You are expecting maybe Mr. Skeffington? <laughs> no, no. Uh... No, Mrs. Nussbaum. This is Jack Benny, the radio comedian. Yes, haven't you ever heard my program on Sunday night? Uh, no, on Sunday nights I'm listening to the other group. 
<laughs> the other droop? Droop Pearson. <laughs> now, Mrs. Nussbaum, Mr. Benny's looking for a singer for his radio program. Uh, who is your favorite singer, Mrs. Nussbaum? Only one singer I am enjoying, John Charles Shapiro. <laughs> John Charles Shapiro? Yes, he's singing at Goldberg's Delicatessen by appointment only. <laughs> and he's good, you say? Good. When John Charles Shapiro is singing, was you is or couldn't you possibly be my neighbor? <laughs> This aforementioned selection I am going crazy No I'm kidding I'm kidding By Shapiro Is positively The world's Greatest singer The world's Greatest singer Now wait a minute Mrs. Nussbaum Don't forget Sinatra What about Frankie Frankie Schmanky <laughs> Shapiro Is romantic Have you ever Heard Sinatra Incessantly I'm hearing Sinatra when he is singing, I am swooning. Well, if Shapiro is more romantic, how can you swoon at Sinatra? When I am swooning at Sinatra, I am thinking of Shapiro. Thank you. <laughs> That's all I need on my program, John Charles Shapiro, by appointment only. <laughs> now, now, don't be impatient, Jack. We'll find somebody. Let's see who's in here. <laughs> Mr. Benny, this is Socrates Mulligan. Pleased to meet you. Uh, pleased to meet you, Mr. Mulligan. Now, wait, wait a minute. He's Jack Benny, the radio comedian. You're Socrates Mulligan. I am? Well, certainly you are. What does it say on your birth certificate? Uh, Molly Mulligan. My mother wanted a girl. <laughs> Look, Socrates, Mr. Benny is trying to find a singer for his radio program. Oh, a singer! The do in the blue of the night, do me to go all of the day, do Sunday, Monday. Oh, would you rather be a Tuesday? <laughs> Wait a minute, Mr. Mulligan. Something tells me you're a great admirer of Bing Crosby. Uh, yeah. I always <laughs> eat his cheese. <laughs> but look. <laughs> While you're talking to us, would you mind taking it out of your mouth? <laughs> yes, Socrates, what about the singer? Oh, dude, I'm nuts about Bing. I eat his cheese for breakfast, cheese for lunch, and uh, cheese for dinner. Well, that's a lot of cheese, but Mr. Benny's looking for a singer. Oh, there's only one singer, Bing Crosby. Dude, I got 200 of Bing's records inside. 200 of Crosby's records? Yeah, and they're all the same song. The mammy little baby love you short and then the short and the little baby love you short and then the bread. Oh, mammy little baby love you. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Look, what what do you do with all that shortening bread? With cheese, it's delicious. Alan's alley, this whole thing is hopeless. Well, don't give up now, Jack. Let's see what happens here. Hi ho all, I'll start my chore. Falstaff's here with poems galore. Falstaff? Falstaff, this is Jack Benny. Well, you're just in time, Mr. Benny. I've written some new odes. Have you heard, the rose has gone from your cheeks, darling, but your neck still looks like a stem? <laughs> no. Or, uh... <laughs> or perhaps, my mother's a bird in a gilded cage since they painted the bars of her cell. No. Or uh, the Siamese twins are going screwy. One's voting for Roosevelt, the other's for Dewey. Well, that's done it, Falstaff. Mr. Benny isn't interested in your poetry. He's just trying to find a singer for his program. Precisely why I am here. I have written a poem. You've written a poem about my problem, Falstaff? Yes, it's called The Reason. How does it go? Mr. Benny, you're haggard and worried as you start your radio season. You wonder why you can't get a singer. I think I can tell you the reason. 
Other programs have no singer problems, so you know something's radically wrong when all radio rings with fine voices and your show boasts nary a song. The reason you can't get a singer, I'll be frank, Mr. B, here is why. A singer won't work for just LSMFT. You've got to pay M-O-N-E-Y. <laughs> you, Fred, these people didn't help me at all. Well, I tried. I'm sorry, Falstaff. Thanks just the same. Well, you gentlemen must have had a long journey. Wouldst uh, join me in a cup of tea? Woods? Woods. Good. <laughs> uh, this way, gentlemen. Oh, Jeeves, Jeeves, please serve some tea. Two for these gentlemen and one for me. Your order, sir, will be up in a minute. Do you want a straight or do you want something in it? <laughs> Rochester Van Jones, what are you doing here? Mr. Falstaff gave me a job writing poems. What? Have you heard? Take that handkerchief out of my brother's mouth, officer. He can't go along with a gag. <laughs> no, I haven't. Besides, I'm looking for a... I'm not looking for a poet. I'm looking for a singer. A singer? Well, well why did you say so? I'll be seeing you oh. in all the old familiar places. When you pay me higher wages all year through... Rochester! I'll find you in the morning Rochester! And when the night Rochester. is through... Rochester! Rochester. Now cut that out and come on home right now! Come on, Fred, let's go! Ladies and gentlemen, this is Jack Benny again. Last Friday, October 27th, was Navy Day, and I had planned sort of a little speech about it. But after reading the headlines in the newspapers about the job our Navy is doing in the South Pacific, I decided to throw my speech away because anything I might say would be insignificant. There's just one thing, however. Our men are out there fighting while I'm talking to you now. Navy Day means that we here at home must continue to back those men up by sticking to our wartime jobs and giving through the many channels at our disposal. Thank you very much. Jack will be back in just a minute. But first, my good friends, L.A. Speed Riggs and Kenneth Delmar. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Remember that, ladies and gentlemen. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. The riper, the naturally milder Lucky Strike tobacco. Yes, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So smoke the smoke tobacco expert smoke. Lucky Strike, so round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. The famous tobacco auctioneers heard on tonight's program are Mr. L.A. Speed Riggs of Goldsboro, North Carolina. Hey, Paul, hey, three, all the evening, the mamma, the old Milgan. And Mr. F.E. Boone of Lexington, Kentucky. At 44, out of 44, sold American. And this is Basil Risedale speaking for Lucky Strike. <laughs> L.S. M.F.T. L.S. M.F.T. L.S. M.F.T. A friendly suggestion. For your own real deep down smoking enjoyment, smoke the smoke tobacco expert smoke. Lucky strike. I want to thank Martha Tilton and Fred Allen and all of Allen. Gee, I hate to thank Allen. I have to, though, I guess, huh? <laughs> and all of Allen's Alley for being here on our show tonight. Good night, everybody. This is the National Broadcasting Company.